Solve the equation shown below. Check for any extraneous solutions. So what we have here is a rational equation. And chances are we're going to get more than one solution. To see if any of these solutions are extraneous, once we get these solutions, we need to plug it in back to the original equation to see if it works. If it does, then it's a true solution. If it doesn't work, then the solution that we have is an extraneous solution. So that's what you need to do anytime you need to check for any extraneous solutions. You want to see if the solution that you got works in the original equation. So how can we solve this rational equation? One of the first things I recommend doing is trying to get rid of the denominator in this fraction. So that means multiplying everything by x. So first we have x times x, which is going to be x squared. Next we have x times 12 over x. The x variables will cancel. And so we're just going to get 12. And then x times 7 is 7x. Now let's subtract both sides by 7x. So we're going to have x squared minus 7x plus 12 is equal to 0. So what we have here is a trinomial with the leading coefficient being 1. To factor it, we need to find two numbers that multiply to 12, but that add to the middle coefficient, negative 7. So this is going to be 3 and 4, but negative 3 and negative 4. Negative 3 plus negative 4 adds up to minus 7, but negative 3 times negative 4 multiplies to positive 12. So we can write this as x minus 3 times x minus 4 is equal to two equal to 0. Now using the zero product property, we can set each factor equal to 0. So adding 3 to both sides, we'll get that x is equal to 3. And for the second equation, adding 4 to both sides, we'll get that x is equal to 4. So these are the two solutions that we have after solving this equation. Now we need to check both answers to see if they work in the original equation. So let's begin by plugging in 3 into the original equation. So replace an x with 3. We're going to have 3 plus 12 divided by 3, which is equal to 7. 12 divided by 3 is 4. And 3 plus 4 is 7. 7 equals 7, so the first solution works. The first solution is not an extraneous solution. Now let's check the second solution. So let's plug in x equals 4. We're going to have 4 plus 12 over 4 equals 7. 12 divided by 4 is 3. 4 plus 3 is 7. So in this example, both solutions work, so we don't have any extraneous solutions for this problem. Now for the sake of practice, let's try another example. So let's say we have this equation. Five over x plus 8 over x plus 3 is equal to 7. Go ahead and solve this equation. Check for any extraneous solutions. So what's the first thing we should do here? The first thing that I recommend doing is getting rid of the two fractions in this equation. And to do that, we need to multiply every term by the denominators of these two fractions. In this case, x and x plus 3. So first, we're going to multiply 5 over x by this. And I'm going to write it out. So we have 5 
over x times x and then times x plus 3. Next, we're going to multiply the second fraction by what we have here. So 8 over x plus 3 times x times x plus 3. And then equals, now we're going to do the same thing with the 7. So we're going to have 7 times x times x plus 3. So in the first term, the x variables cancel out. In the second term, x plus 3 cancels out. So what we have left over here is 5 times x plus 3. And then plus 8 times x. And then equals, we have 7x times x plus 3. Now let's go ahead and distribute. So I'm going to distribute the 5 to x plus 3. So we're going to have 5 times x and 5 times 3. So this is going to be 5x plus 15. Now let's distribute the 7x to x plus 3. So 7x times x, that's going to be 7x squared. And then 7x times 3 is 21. Now let's combine these two like terms. Now this should be 21x. 7x times 3 is not just 21, but 21x. So 5x plus 8x, that's going to be 13x. So we're going to have 13x plus 15. And that's going to equal 7x squared plus 21x. Now I'm going to take everything from the left side and move it to the right side. So these two terms are positive on the left side, but when we move it over, they will both be negative on the right side. So leaving behind nothing or a zero on the left side. On the right side, we'll have 7x squared plus 21x minus 13x minus 15. So as you can see, they're now negative on the right side. Now we can combine 21x and negative 13x. And so 21 minus 13, that's positive 8. So that's what we now have at this point. So how do we factor 7x squared plus 8x minus 15? If we multiply the leading coefficient 7 by the constant term negative 15, that's going to give us negative 105. Now we need to find two numbers that multiply to negative 105, but that add to the middle term 8. And we already have two numbers here. And notice that these two numbers add up to negative 8, so if we change the sign, they will add up to positive 8 and still multiply to negative 105. So what we can do is we can replace the middle term 8x with negative 7x and positive 15x because negative 7x plus 15x is equal to 8x. But what this allows us to do is it allows us to factor by grouping. So in the first two terms, we're going to take out the GCF, which is going to be 7x. 7x squared divided by 7x, that's x. Negative 7x divided by 7x is negative 1. Now, in the last two terms, we're going to take out the GCF, which is 15. And that's going to leave us with x minus 1 as well. So now we're going to factor out the GCF again. This time, it's x minus 1. 
So when we factor out x minus 1 from this term, what's left over is the 7x. And if we take out x minus 1 from the second term, what's left over is positive 15. So that's what we now have. Now let's set each factor equal to 0. And let's solve for x. So for this equation, all we need to do is add 1 to both sides. And we'll get x is equal to 1. So that's the first solution. For the second one, we need to subtract both sides by 15 and then divide by 7. So this will give us x is equal to negative 15 over 7. So those are the two potential solutions that we have for this rational equation. So now let's plug in the first solution to the original equation to see if it works. So we have 5 over 1 plus 8 over 1 plus 3. Let's see if that equals 7. 5 divided by 1 is 5. 1 plus 3 is 4. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 5 plus 2 is 7. And 7 equals 7. So this is a true solution. It's not an extraneous solution. So now let's try the other solution, negative 15 over 7. So replacing x with negative 15 over 7, we have this. So what we have here, these, you could think of them as complex fractions. So to simplify, I'm going to multiply the first fraction by 7 over 7, and I'm going to do the same thing with the second fraction. So 5 times, 7 times 5 is 35. And over here, the 7s will cancel, leaving us with negative 15. 8 times 7, that's 56. And then I need to multiply both of these by 7. So here, the 7s will cancel, giving us negative 15. And then... 3 times 7, that's going to be 21. Thirty-five, we can write that as 5 times 7. Negative 15, we can write that as negative 5 times 3. Negative 15 plus 21, that's going to be positive 6. Here, we can cancel a 5, so we're left with negative 7 over 3. 56, I'm going to write that as 28 times 2. And 6, I'm going to write that as 3 times 2. So we can cancel the 2. So we have negative 7 over 3 plus 28 over 3 equals 7. Negative 7 plus 28, or 28 minus 7, that's going to be 21. 21 divided by 3 is 7. 7 equals 7. So the second solution works. So we don't have any extraneous solution for this particular example. So that's it for this video.